Record collectors would love what John has and would be willing to pay well to acquire them. I've uh, got a couple of autographed albums here. Fleetwood Mac and Elton John, huh? The artists were gracious enough to sign them for me. John believes his items are worth a lot of money and wants to make a sale for a very noble cause. Will Corey be willing to part with that money for the records? I'm lucky to sell my autographed. The albums are in pretty good shape. The vinyl's perfect. There's no scratches. If we're able to make a sale today, I will definitely be donating 100%. Corey knows a lot about the albums and the musicians and is interested in them. John, I'm assuming you're John? I'm John, okay. yes. Okay. Big Fleetwood and... Christy McVie. This by far is like their most successful album. Yeah, you know, they're a little tongue in cheek with the name rumors. I mean, there was all kinds of rumors going on about what was going on inside the band. It'd be hard to find anybody that doesn't like Fleetwood Mac. Since neither John nor Corey know the album's worth, they call an expert to help them. If the items are valued higher than John's initial thought, he can help more people. But uh, I, I just picked that number. Do you mind if I have the signatures checked out? Send them over to my guy. He's out of town right now. Yes, sir. The first hurdle is crossed as Steve vouches for the authenticity of the autographs. Those are two albums and uh, pretty interesting to be honest with you. So what can you tell me about the Fleetwood Mac album? The items are legit and rare, which mostly means more money for the seller. What do you think about the Elton John Yellow Brick Road? Late 80s, early 90s, a more reclusive signer now, solid gold. The value of the albums is mind-blowing, and if Corey decides to buy them, John will be leaving the store with a considerable sum. Elton John is worth about $500. If you had Lindsay on there, I think it would add a lot more value. See you soon. Corey makes a point that might help John get even more money than Steve said on the albums. But I kind of have a hunch that there could even be more value here. I got my guy Warwick in town. Do you mind if I have him take a look at him too? The expert is a connoisseur of 70s knowledge and gives great insight into the history of the albums. 76 and 77. Elton. He started in like 1970 or so. Very, very common album. So this was the heyday of FM radio. I think it's an opportunity for the DJ to go and have a smoke. His valuation further ups the value of the items brought into the store. Go for a lot because there's a lot of them. I'm top price on that, maybe $400. Big and bold. It's a good display piece. That's a lot more than I expected, to be honest. Good. John doesn't get greedy and accepts Corey's fair offer. Give me a thousand bucks for the pair. I sincerely appreciate that. All right, come with me. Let's do some uh, paperwork. A uh, grand going to a great cause. Chum Lee is in charge of the store and is shown a fascinating item, but he's skeptical about its value. How can I help you? I brought you my pistol rocket rescue set. Looks like a flare gun to me. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Justin isn't worried about the value of his item and is hoping to get a neat sum for it. Will the expert's valuation be close to his prediction? Or is he in for a huge disappointment? I'm here at the pawn shop today to sell my pistol rocket. I'm hoping to get $1,450 for the set. And all the parts are there. Upon closer inspection, Chumley's skepticism changes to admiration. He's learned much about the apparatus and is intrigued to be so close to one. This apparatus could fire a line over 200 yards. If your ship's over a certain size, you have to actually have something like this on board to rescue people. These things save thousands and thousands of lives. Despite his admiration, he doesn't agree with Justin's valuation of the item, and the possibility of a deal becomes slim as neither man isn't ready to compromise. You gotta give me a better price than $1,450. That's way too high for me. $500. Really? To be fair, if I knew that this thing works, I maybe could pay a little bit more. Chum Lee is a pro at bargaining and gets Justin to agree to a sum that is way less than his initial offer. 625. I think that's really good. Okay. We'll All write right. it up. Thanks, man. Rick isn't convinced Chum Lee got a good deal for the rocket launcher and decided to get an expert to come in and examine it. Abandoning a ship. How did you come up with the number 625? That's the lowest number they were willing to take. He's just going to tell you how good I am. The expert, Alex, thinks Chum Lee was right with his valuation and decides to help Rick check out if the rocket launcher works. Oh, you really did do a good job. Alex's explanation of the components of the apparatus is fascinating, but Rick is impatient to discover if the rocket still works. Mine throwers is they actually used these cartridges. So these cartridges are essentially blanks. Now this is a waterproof seal and then these literally work like a bottle rocket. 
That's really cool. The result of the experiment is fantastic, and Rick is glad Chum Lee made the deal. I think every penny was well spent. The, the complete set only had four, so you're looking at 1500 Rick is meeting a client out of the store with hopes of closing a deal on some antique mugs. I got a call at the shop from a guy who has some antique thunder mugs, so I'm meeting him out here at the gun range. Tom knows much about his mugs and wants a fair price for them. Bolivian celebratory or holiday mortars. I bought them from street vendors. I've been a collector all my life, but they don't really fit my collection. $800 for these mortars. He isn't the only one with knowledge of the Bolivian mugs. Rick knows about them, and he's excited about seeing and maybe even possessing these antiques. This is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. The English Navy started using these in the 1500s. They sort of look like a mug. Good name. What they were originally used for was just a signal that they were coming into harbor. Eventually, they were just basically used for everything. This was it. Rick wants to test the mugs before negotiating, but Tom is confident he will find no fault with them. I'm thinking $800 is a fair price. We'll see how loud they are first. Mm, that works. They will work, and I'm sure that um, they'll fire just fine. Tom is right about the condition of the mugs. Okay. <laughs> that was really cool. Negotiations are ongoing, and Rick has met an equal in Tom. After some back and forth, they agree on a price, and Rick walks away with his new acquisitions. I'm still going to say $800. Let's start there. You know what? You got a deal. Um, I absolutely love them. I think they're the coolest things I've ever bought. I'll pay you. Done deal. All right. Sports memorabilia is always valuable because there is a huge market for them. It's a hockey stick that was autographed by Paul Newman filming in the movie Slapshot. Do I look like a hockey player? Not on your life. Carol is confident that her hockey stick is very valuable and is angling for a huge profit from its sale. I'm at the pawn shop today trying to sell my hockey stick, one of a kind hockey stick. If I make the sale today, then maybe I'll buy something nice for someone. Corey shares Carol's optimism about the value of the hockey stick, especially given its history but he still needs to be sure the signature on it is genuine. Oh, you know, down and out hockey team with down and out player coach, I think was what Paul Newman was. The critics didn't like it too much, but I mean, it's got a cult following. Steve believes the item would be extremely valuable if the autograph on it is genuine, and Carol can't wait to find out if she will make a nice profit. Won an Academy Award in 1986. He's been in some of the greatest movies of all time. Slapshot is definitely one of them. Steve is careful with the examination as it is difficult to distinguish the fake from the original. Also the thing to think about too, he had secretary signing for him literally throughout his entire career. Now, and this is kind of what I would expect, a uh, fiber tip marker. It's kind of got this big P in it. Signature matches, perfect. Even though he proves the stick is legit, there's still the issue of its value and Steve's declaration makes Carol very happy. Who has a Paul Newman signed hockey stick from this era? That's good. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. With the new information on the stick, Corey finds it difficult to get Carol to compromise, and he caves into her demand. I'm going to offer you six. Seven. <sighs> I don't think I'll see another one, so you got a deal. Meet me over there. We're going to do some paperwork. Even if its market value isn't up to what Corey paid for the hockey stick, Rick's excitement about having it in his possession makes the deal worth it. There it is. No, 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 no. How much do you love me? Favorite son at the moment? Charlestown Chiefs? It's one of my favorite movies ever. Never even heard of it. No. Paul Newman was a mega Hollywood actor. They actually named a real team after him. 